Have you heard of this? Stereotype of like Asian parents wanting their kids to be doctors. I know because my parents were the same way. They just wanted us to be doctors. It's pretty common when it comes to first generation Americans. Actually, to be honest, it's almost all ethnicities. Because when Asian parents want their kids to be doctors, helping people is like on the bottom of a list of reasons. <laughs> helping people is like the unfortunate byproduct. It's the money and the prestige. Because if you're a first generation immigrant, your children becoming doctors is the quickest way. You can turn it around. Start from the bottom, now we're here. We're doctors. <laughs> Now, Ronnie Chang, that's not 100% true, but a lot of people can relate to it. In this podcast, our very own Rafi and Tina are going to talk about their healthcare journey and help you guys walk through it. Uh, what's up, Charlie family? This is Charles, administrator. Hope you guys are doing good. I have Rafia, one of our ambassadors Hello. here, and then also Tina, one of our ambassadors. <laughs> Hello. Um, thank you for ha hopping on and hanging out. Of course. Uh, we were literally just talking about, I think last week, mm -hmm. about uh, just your experience just with healthcare mm -hmm. and being in healthcare and coming into figuring out why you want to do healthcare. And so we were like, why don't we just do a podcast? Why don't we just talk about like your roadmaps uh, as mm -hmm. a student? and like what got you into healthcare and where you are now. I think there's a lot of people that are, as we have an aging population, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who need help and they're thinking about going into healthcare, but they may not want to pursue actual medicine, right? And become a nurse or become a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, well, why don't you we just talk about it? So um, thanks for hopping on. Yeah, Appreciate you course. guys hanging out. Uh, so Rafi, just tell us about yourself in general and just what made you go into healthcare and come here at Charlotte. Of course. Mm -hmm. So I went to Texas A&M University. Yeah, you got to go give good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Can y'all pin it on the ring? <laughs> yeah, we got the ring. Okay. So going into college, I s didn't kind of know what I wanted to do. I started out in engineering. Oh. And I realized quickly that engineering was not for me. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was in engineering freshman year, completed that. It was hard but doable. Mm -hmm. Sophomore year, I was like, what is going on? Yeah. I was like, it just wasn't making sense to me the classes were just getting harder and harder i'm like is this what i want to do mm. and if i wanted to change this was the time to do it sophomore year mm. and then i had a conversation with my parents about it um my dad my mom's a stay-at-home mom and my dad's a surgeon an orthopedic surgeon mm. and i was just surrounded by people in my family that were in healthcare. Mm. so i just would ask my family questions i'm like okay i don't want to be face to face yeah but maybe I can do something in the background or maybe if I just want to see, okay, maybe I do want to do face to face. Mm. It's still undecided. Um, and then I spoke to my, I think my advisor and she's like, yeah, we can move you over to the pre-med or the community health route, mm. which is where I can get an internship my last semester. Um, and just see, take health classes. I was like, okay, let's just do that. Mm -hmm. Best decision. Wow. I took, I took like pre-med classes, so biology, yep, yep. chemistry, all those, got Anatomy. through those. Yeah, yeah got nice. through those. And then also, which was weird, COVID hit too during that. Mm. So I still was like, okay, we got through those classes. Is this still what I want to do? Then um, I worked at my aunt's um, clinic mm. and I was like, this is fun. I did the back end stuff, more of like the man and side scheduling, yeah, yeah. Uh, helping out with just pill management yeah, seeing yeah, all yeah. that medical assistant stuff and finally i landed a internship with md anderson my nice. last semester of college wow. and that's when i knew i was like okay yeah this is what i like what? yeah so it was like the back end stuff and i would help them create powerpoints um i guess other marketing materials as well mm -hmm. for all people like surgeons and other clinician staffs when they onboard mm. so they get to see it um whenever they come on board mm. basically so yeah, and then after doing that, um, they did extend an offer, but I was like, I don't want to stay in Houston. Mm. Houston's just not for me. Um, and then I came back and I was like, okay, let me just get on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just started job searching mm. and then Charlotte came up. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, home health and hospice. Don't know much about it, <laughs> yeah. but let me just see. And yeah, you yeah. know, it's marketing, try it out. Um, I interviewed and applied and interviewed and I got it and now I'm here and I love it. So <laughs> and I've learned so much. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's so that was cool. kind of my way 
That's pretty amazing. Through. Yeah. yeah. Like, what did you feel like, you know, through that, through that process, was it, were some key things that helped you like feel like it was the right thing for you to do? Is there anything, anything you could think about? Um, I guess the feeling I feel like really accomplished at the end of the day, mm. whether it, I would see the patient or if I was just doing back end stuff, I just enjoyed it. I wasn't like, Oh, I don't want to like, right. If I like, do I want to do it again tomorrow? And mm. I did want to do it again tomorrow. And I just love learning about medicine and yeah. just helping people. That's cool. So yeah. Well, and that feeling wasn't there when you were doing engineering. You were like, oh, no, not no, at no. all. I would dread going to class. Yeah. I remember I'd call like my sister and be like, "What am I like doing?" She was like, "If you don't want to do it, you can always switch." Yeah. And then just having the conversation with my parents and thinking about it, uh, and then it kind of geared me towards that's health, cool. healthcare. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. That's of course. Cool. Yeah. Tina, what you got? What you, <laughs> tell us about all your right. road trip journey. <laughs> So, I went to the University of Texas at Dallas. Cool. Oh, you're not going to do the comments? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is yeah, it? What is it? Yeah. What is it? Comments. Comments. All right. That's yeah. my first time doing it. <laughs> Sweet. Nice. But yeah, so I started off in pre-health, and I was doing on the nursing track. Cool. So yeah, um, that was during COVID. So, that was the first year of COVID was my freshman year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I was doing that, and I took chemistry, gen chem, and I was like, mm, I don't think I want to do this. <laughs> like, COVID was just a time where I was, like, really reflecting a lot, and I was like, can I really, like, be, like, in front of a patient? And, like, mm. I'm not good with fluids. I'm not good with all that kind of stuff. So I was like, mm. I don't think this is for me, but I really love healthcare still, and that was, like, one thing I really enjoyed and knew that I wanted to do was just helping people. Mm. And so... For me, growing up, I always thought helping people, you had to just be in front of the patient at mm. all times. But I never realized, like, there was a whole back end to helping people. Right. People behind the patient, or people behind the nurses, people mm. behind the doctors, and that they have, like, a whole industry within mm. itself. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a big turning point for me. Um, my mom was a nurse, so mm. I was like, oh, let me follow in her footsteps. Yeah. But luckily, my dad's in business, so I had, like, both ends and being like, you should pull me this way, pull me this way. Nice. My parents actually were like, don't go into healthcare because, like, they knew how hard it was. My yeah. sister does healthcare. She's a doctor. Oh. My brother is an engineer, so I was, like, the wild child. Yeah, I was, like, yeah. wild card. And, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I chose to do business, and my dad's really happy that I chose to do that. Nice. And then my mom's also still happy because I'm still, like, in the healthcare part of it. Nice. But, yeah, so after first year, I switched out into... I found out there was healthcare management mm -hmm. and cause I was talking to my advisor and I was like, I still want to be in healthcare, but I don't want to be like in front of a patient doing all that kind of stuff. And so she's like, Oh, there's like healthcare management, healthcare administration, all this mm -hmm. stuff. And so the school that I go to JSOM, mm -hmm. they have, shout out to JSOM. Yeah, shout out to JSOM. <laughs> they have a ton of opportunities. Like you could do anything in healthcare. You could do like comp sign healthcare, engineering and healthcare, art and healthcare. Wow. Yeah. So there's a ton of different stuff you can do with a combination with JSOM. So it has like the business part of it. Mm. But yeah, that was very helpful. And then I started taking classes that more were aimed towards healthcare, like healthcare regulation. Nice. Mm. Learning about all that was super cool. Ethics in healthcare. Mm. That was way more interesting than just like biology and all yeah. that to me at least. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Yeah, Gen Chem. Gen Chem. I feel like it's there to weed. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they put it there out. just to weed out people. Yeah, like, yeah, sure. you really want to do this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so all those classes that I took my last couple two years were really good. And nice. then when I went to study abroad, I was still kind of hesitant on like, do I want to just do like healthcare administration, like um, in an office or do I want to do like marketing or business development, mm. all that kind of stuff. And so when I studied abroad, I got to take a business development class and a marketing class. Oh, wow. And I didn't take marketing here. And I think taking it abroad was very different than taking it here. Because just the way they teach abroad was very different. How was that? Was it pretty neat? Yeah. Like, here is just, like, oh, vocab, stuff like that. But there you're, like, given a project. And so we had to market for a play that came out in, like, the 1900s. It was cool to just apply, like, modern techniques to that hmm. and still make it um, marketable well, for Gen Z. Wow. But, yeah, it was, like, really cool to see that. And so, yeah, then... For JSON, we need an internship to graduate. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. And at the time, I was like, why is this a rule? Like, this is so <laughs> stupid. Yeah. For A&M, too. Like, oh, really? So yeah. stupid. Like, why? they're going to make you not graduate. If, yeah. No no offense to yeah. anyone from JSON. No shout out to JSON. Yeah. <laughs> no shout out to JSON. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was like, okay, let me look for an internship. It's my senior year. And I was on LinkedIn. Yep. And it was actually, like, one of the only things I applied to on LinkedIn. Because I didn't what? even know LinkedIn, like, you could apply on LinkedIn. 
And you just happened to open it. Yeah, and then oh, I saw crazy. yours because it was the closest to my house. It's like 10 minutes from home. <laughs> and so I applied. Yeah, yeah. So I applied. Pl- plug on LinkedIn. Like, yeah. it's just the way for people to get things. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's it. So I came in and I met Charles and JT, like my mm. first interview. Mm. And he just opened up with like a fist bump. And I was like, this yeah. is the place I'm supposed to be. <laughs> really laid back. Yeah. Really nice. And so, oh. yeah, I was doing oh. infield marketing for you mm-hmm. the first semester. Mm-hmm. On, and he was also super flexible with like mm-hmm. working on Fridays because I was in school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, then I crazy. came back the second semester, and then now I'm here in the summer after I graduated. Nice. And yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's crazy how, like, when you look back, how the journeys are so different. Like, mm-hmm. it go ebbs and flows, like, with yeah. everything. Like, what, what would you say, like, are the biggest things that, like, I know, like, having your parents, like, kind of lead you and guide you, like, mm-hmm. what are some things that you felt, like, helped you as well to kind of make the right decision? Yeah, so my mom... For honestly, it was just seeing the kind of day she works, like the nights mm. and like even like it was for her it wasn't like nine to five, even though like when you think of a nurse, you're like, oh, they go home like after they're done. But she was yeah. still like doing charting and yeah. all that. Yeah. So I was like, mm, I'm not a big fan of <laughs> working after <laughs> wow. staying up and all that. But and then my dad, he was like um, obviously on the business side and he had a bunch of career changes. Mm. So he was originally a doctor, going to be a doctor in India. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then he came here and did IT for IBM. And then he switched to real estate. And so he was always like, it's okay to change your mind. Like, you have so much time. He didn't start real estate until he was, like, 40. Wow, So, like, he was still changing his mind up until, like, 10 years ago. And he's still doing other stuff now. So, like, having that, like, reassurance to be like, it's okay to, like, change your mind. Figure out what you want. Take your time before you stick to something. Mm. That helped a lot. That's cool. That's cool. What about you? What would you say? Yeah, I feel like mine was a little different. I feel like my dad was more stricter. Yeah. He was more like, okay, you need to figure something out. And I was like, okay, like, we'll figure it out. Um, his schedule was always really, really busy too. Yeah. So, but I know that, like, he was like, okay, yeah, like, it is rewarding, but I will be busy and stuff. And my mom was a stay at home mom. Mm. So I, even being like, stay at, stay at home moms out there, 10 out of 10. Like, <laughs> To get, you know, from when we were younger, getting us ready, getting us to go to school, like dropping us That's off. Amazing. And my mom's English wasn't the best either. Mm. You know, while my dad was working, she would just yeah. do all that. So. Stay at home moms. Shout, yeah. That's like a that's a major in and of itself. There's like yeah. the masters and then there's being a stay at home mom. Exactly. No, she did a lot. Um, but yeah, they were stricter too. And my mom was just she knew about my, like what my dad does. It was mm. very unfamiliar with other like she knew bu- so business. So in our culture, it's always okay, this- what's your culture? So yeah. Is it so, your culture? Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. talk about that. Okay. Yeah, so I am Pakistani. Cool. So first gen. Cool. Um, so basically in our culture, usually is whenever we graduate, they either want us to be like STEM. So basically okay, business, okay. doctor, lawyer, anything, yeah, engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they just want you to fall into that because it just is, they just. It's, security. Yeah, security. And it's also like uh, brag to yeah, all my kids doing this. Yeah, my kids do. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, going back off of the other tangent, it was just. um just making sure I get a job and it's a good job and mm. I'm enjoying it at the same time. Yeah, but also yeah, yeah. just not b- being at home and being lazy, wow. kind of going out there and searching for a job. So yeah. wow. it's stricter for sure. Wow. Do you feel like, do you, do you like, I mean, just growing up in that culture, do you feel like some of your like fellow like peers, like are also, they go through that same like struggle or like, yeah. how do they deal with like figuring out how, like some parents are, more harsh or some parents are more flexible what are you what have you like experienced yeah well? so in college all of my roommates my other three roommates they're from pakistan too cool. so they we related in a way together because their parents were similar to mine and our parents were re- oh, they also became friends too nice. um so we related to each other we talked about it to each other so but they also understood like we all went through the same kind of path um one two were in healthcare mm-hmm. and one was in business oh, okay. so okay, yeah cool. we all related but um and yeah if we were just ever like going through anything we always just bonded with oh, each other yeah, yeah crack jokes and yeah <laughs> yeah but and but also with my friends from high school they weren't the same culture as me okay. um but their parents were more like patient more lenient mm-hmm. and they could like oh take a year off and just you know uh-huh. but with mine if i ever brought that idea nope. up they're like what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, what's going on? So that was kind of my thing. Wow. With that. What about you? Like, yeah. um, yeah, what's your culture? So what yeah, you so I'm Indian, cool. but I'm Catholic. So we have like the Sunday mass. So all the moms go and talk and brag about their kids <laughs> after that. That's the main reason to go. But a lot of my friends are doing medicine. I think actually all of my friends are doing medicine. Oh wow! Yeah, like the straight med school path or PA. 
And so uh, even at our family parties, like now that we see each other like every couple months, they're all like, do I really want to be a doctor? And I'm like, oh, you're like eight years into it. Like, oh, yeah, wow, but they're all, yeah, 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 exactly. And they're like, oh, but I can't tell my parents like I'm even ooh, questioning it. Yeah. yeah, especially after like being in it for that long. So I know a lot of them are like very conflicted on if they, like, they really want to That's do it. Tough. But they've already put in so much work and already like had so much pressure by the yeah. parents. So I was like, oh, I'm glad I got out early. Wow, <laughs> like, didn't feel, yeah, yeah, the pressure yeah. barrier. Yeah. Wow. And it's hard because I think like, you want to honor your parents, right? Mm -hmm. because they Especially because the they came here for yes, you. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are first gen too? First generation? Both yeah. of you guys? First yeah. gen is just that you were the first ones born here, right? Yeah. It's yeah. not the college. First thing, generation right? American, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I will, yeah, I'll be me too. So, yeah, yeah that's yeah. funny. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's tough. I think it's the same thing. Like, I was just thinking, like, when I look back, as for me, too, like, my parents, you know, my mom and dad were born in Nigeria, and they came over to America, mm -hmm. and they had me and my brother. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I look back, and I'm like, man, like, I always wanted to be a doctor, too, mm -hmm. like, when I was a kid. But I just wanted to help people. I didn't know that being a doctor, you, like, you can help people outside of being a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, my parents were like, yeah, of course, doctor, yeah, doctor, like Nigerians, are like doctor, yeah. lawyer, engineer. Yeah. That's it. Like, those are the top <laughs> like three. Relate to that. That's it. Like, it's like in Nigeria, it's like doctor, lawyer, engineer, right? Yeah. Doctor's the best, lawyer, engineer. Mm -hmm. And then professional athlete. Like, that, <laughs> like, like, like this is something like that. It's like making a name for Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Because then you think about, like, okay, why they came to America. Mm -hmm. For they came to America for us, mm -hmm. right? They sacrificed to come to America to 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 do everything for their mm -hmm. children yeah. to make a better life. And I for think, years. and so I think there's like that kind of guilt, you know, healthy mm -hmm. guilt in a way. Yeah. And so like I think even for me, I I agree. It's just like how do you honor them in a way, but also still do your well, own do your yeah. own person, yeah. yeah, because you can still excel and and do well in that craft. Yeah. And so man, that's. That's crazy. Yeah. That's really crazy. <laughs> wow, wow. What are some things that you guys have, like, this, this experience with making that choice? Do you feel like that choice that you made is good and why? Like, to not kind of, like, go away from, like, what you felt was good or what you felt was being a doctor or being a nurse or what were, what were some things that made you make that decision? So are you saying just, like, how we, like, started out? Or? Yeah. Like yeah. Um, I remember whenever I, like, was deciding to leave engineering, I was like, Oh, like I was thinking about their reaction before mine. Yeah. And I, but then I was like talking to some people like, no, like think about yourself first and then you can tell them. But I, honestly, they weren't that upset. Mm. I was actually generally kind of surprised. Mm. They just wanted to make sure I had a backup plan. plan. Yeah. So it wasn't as scary as I thought, yeah. but having a backup plan and then ended up being the right choice. So I'm wow. glad I didn't just pull through because wow. how going piggyback off what you were saying with your friends about i know a lot of people <laughs> who are in med school or pa wow. you know long years and they're like i don't want to do this and they're already locked in and you don't i just don't know what i'm just like yeah, yeah. i don't know what to tell you <laughs> yeah i'm like i don't know what to tell you but I, you know what i mean it's just like a thing where it's like they're just trying to make their parents happy yeah. but at what cost yeah 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 i think the biggest thing is like when you're doing i think like Think about that. Like, it's if you're able to say no mm -hmm. now, you're actually saying yes for a better future. Yeah. Right? Like, so it's like you saying no is actually helping that whole process. Yeah. But and like, it, they'll come around too. I think some people are just like, oh, or hopefully they come around. Yeah. But at the end, it always works out, you wow. know? And you can, you, who know, you can excel at whatever you do later <laughs> on and make a name for yourself there, you know? Wow. Everyone's just, you know, trying yeah. their best. So, well, what, what advice would you give someone who's like, just like, uh, I don't, I'm deciding whether or not I should say no to this and mm -hmm. tell my parents, like, what advice would you give them, like, to actually process that through, like, okay, now you have friends who are already in it, yeah, and it's, it's almost kind of too, not, I want to say too late, mm -hmm. but, like, what if, let's fast forward to those who are really considering, like, their early, actually switching yeah, out. what would you advise them to say, like, okay, like, just to be, like, it's okay, you know, yeah. what would you say? Yeah, I would first just listen to them thoroughly, because I feel like sometimes they just want to, like, rant, mm. and so after they rant, they're like, okay, like, let's think about this, like, seriously, and um, I would just tell them, do what makes you happy, because yeah. at, at the end of the day, you're doing it for yourself, and you're going to be doing this you know, job. you can always yeah. switch later on, but you're going to be going through this path yourself. Yeah. So whatever you think is right for you, just do it. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. What would you say yeah. as well? Um, I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. I would say envision yourself in 20 years and mm -hmm. doing the job that you think your parents want you to do and see how you feel 
how you would feel doing that for like the next 20 years. Wow. And so for me, I was envisioning being a nurse. And then after seeing my mom being a nurse, I was like, I think I could do this for one day. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah. And then so when I was thinking about business, I was like, wow, I really like, especially with the classes I was taking, it's like, this is more my speed. I really like the whole like relationship thing with building with other, um, with your customers and all that. Mm. So I definitely think just envision yourself in that place. And then if your immediate reaction is just like, ugh, like the rest of my life, I, I don't want to work for the rest of my yeah. life, then that's a bad sign. That's good. That's but good. yeah, in a perfect world, everyone would love their jobs. Yeah. But yeah. it's not like that. It's not like that. Yeah. yeah that's but it's good. scary to think like the people taking care of you hate their job. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. scary. Or some I, of them at least. Especially, <laughs> especially in healthcare. Yeah. yeah. I think because healthcare is like of all the industries, it's, it's service based. It's, yeah. you, it's draining emotionally. Mm-hmm. It's already draining emotionally. But like have not having the heart for it is kind of, it is kind of yeah. scary. Yeah. You know, that's very yeah. true. Like it's like I think I oh that's a very good point. It definitely like, affects patient care. It does. Yeah. Like and so like it's not just about you know even like pleasing your parents. It's about okay how do I best serve this patient? Mm-hmm. If my heart's not in it, then I cannot best serve this patient. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And that's what the industry needs is mm-hmm. the next generation who are fully passionate mm-hmm. about serving patients, taking care of them going above and beyond mm-hmm. kind of like the call of duty yeah. Yeah. you know and i think if i think that's one of the what we were kind of talking about last week is like just making sure that okay if you really want to do this you know make sure that you you really want to do it yeah yeah because this next generation as we're coming into a lot of healthcare needs in the next 20 years right from seniors to uh baby boomers to everything like mm-hmm. there's going to be a massive need mm-hmm. and so we need people who are really like called you know, and they feel yeah. like I could do this, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's great, great, great points. Any closing thoughts that you guys could think of as we're kind of coming to an end in terms of healthcare, going into healthcare and choosing something outside of maybe clinical? Um, anything you guys could think of? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have something. Um, I feel like if when you're going to school, take advantage of also like clubs and stuff. Mm. I feel like that's a really big thing. Um, just seeing what you like, what you don't like. And just kind of like feeling it out. And she made a really good point about envisioning yourself. Mm. Like how you said the nursing thing, you can only do it for a day. I don't want to do it later on. (laughs) And especially with what we do is just we're taking care of someone's parents. So, you know what I mean? And just like I would want it to be the same way someone took care of mine. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I always just keep that in my heart and just whatever we're doing, we're doing good work. That's good. So if you have the heart for it, yeah. And if, you know, you're in med school and go down the line or in some kind of health field, you're like, I don't want to do this. Rethink it, Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it's not for everyone and it takes a lot. So Mm -hmm. that's good. That's really good. I agree to piggyback off of that. Um, It's never too late. Mm -hmm. Even after college, take a gap year. You deserve it. (laughs) Yeah. But a lot of times, like in those gap years, people find that they don't want to do whatever they originally planned, at least in Mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. Also, it's okay to not know what you want to do in college. Do a minor. If there's something that maybe even interests you, Mm -hmm. try to do a minor. And maybe that'll end up being what you want to do instead of your major. Yeah. So I think that's what I would say. Yeah. Just explore your options. Yeah. Yeah. Be involved. Explore. That's awesome. It'll be all right. Talk mm-hmm. to people too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interns, internships. Yeah. yeah. Internships, internships are a internships, great. Internships, yeah. Because then you find out, like, whoa, I actually really enjoy this. Yeah. But you wouldn't have known if you didn't, like, test it out. Yeah. Test out so many like, different right, things. Like, jumping into yeah, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Peter, yeah. you have any piggyback questions or questions you could think of on the back end as well? <laughs> uh, during the time I was working in the assisted living homes, mm-hmm. every now and then they would bring in young children. Oh, you know, wow. to uh, uh, maybe during the holidays or something like that. Or maybe it was just to come in and, the, you know, the kids had done mm-hmm. like drawings or mm-hmm. some type of art for them. Mm-hmm. That does a lot. Mm-hmm. It does a lot. And the reason why I say that is because I think people who are considering getting into this business, I think they should do the same. Mm-hmm. Go into those homes, you know, uh, interact with them. That also will let you know, am I capable of doing this? Yeah. You know, is it? Is it truly me? Um, will I be able to give my all? Mm. And I know a lot of times we say that, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, uh, when it comes to care, uh, would these people uh, have enough feeling, enough heart to take care of my parents? Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, me personally, I always take it a little deeper because me, of course, now mm. being in my 60s, <laughs> I mm. say, would I be able to tolerate if they were taking care of me? Mm. 
And so I said, okay, would I be able to do that? Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I try and make it more personal as much as possible, mm -hmm. you know, as you possibly can. Yeah. But like you said earlier, it's, it's something that it's not for everyone, but um, see if it's for you, see if it's for you. And even, even if you feel, I don't know if I can do that, go visit these people, sit down with them, talk to them, because we've had this conversation. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised of the stories yeah. and the information that they can give you just through their history, mm. which you, you have no idea of. But just do that. That helps, you know, along the road as well. Mm. But again, I, man, you guys are fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's not for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's good to see those who are putting their best foot forward, yeah. you know, to, uh, to go into that field and to do as well as they possibly can. Yeah. Everyone can't do it though. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. That is very true. That's a good point because not everyone can do it. And I think mm -hmm. it's okay if people realize like, oh, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they don't have to feel bad because not everyone was meant, you know, to, to cut hair. Not, right. not everyone is meant yeah. to, to, to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. but, but some people that are meant to cut hair can cut hair very well, yeah. right? Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. everyone has their like role to play. Yeah. Yeah. And if Having they- like the courage to say, I'm not fit um, for this. Yeah. yeah. That's like way more Does positive it, impact. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, you know, we, we see like a lot of, like just everyone, everyone gets um, kind of, uh, kind of put into their own identity of what they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we, you know, we're not what we do. We are who we are, mm -hmm. right? And the skill sets, the talents that we have, the gifts that we have can be used in any type of occupation, yeah. right? The occupation doesn't really make us. And so I think even as, you know, students who are considering maybe switching out of med medical school or doing sub several things, just know that the gifts and the talents that you have can be applied, can be applied anywhere, yeah. you know? And so that's a, uh, that's a really good, good point. That's a good point. I have another thing. Yeah, go ahead, please. I, just, yeah. I wanted to bring this up too, because I think it's really yeah. important, especially with in healthcare in general is like being a subject matter expert yeah. and also just being aware. Yeah. So especially with different cultures, there's different religions, different yeah. beliefs. So being aware of different religions and like things they allow and don't allow, yeah. especially if you work in a, in the health, even marketing, yeah, like I do, like going into someone's house, taking off your shoes, yeah. or just even just if it's like, you know, if you're a Muslim like me yeah. going in and it's like guys and girls are kind of more separated. Yeah. So it's like, if it's a lady, let a guy or let a girl come in. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And so it's just being more aware and yeah. make sure you're educating yourself. Yeah, and, that's huge. Yeah, very yeah. huge. Because those things, I think it's a it's by you understanding, you're able to serve better. Exactly. You know, and like and then and then it's one thing. It's like if you don't know, then ask. Right. Like yeah. If you don't know something, it's like, well, what does that mean? How can I help better? Always serve ask. You? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that's so good. And then they'll be happy as well. Like yeah. you ask that's or awesome. you're aware. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I really wanted to bring that up. That's just so being good. aware. That's so and good. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Anything else on your end too? Not really. <laughs> she nailed it. She nailed I was gonna it. say the whole cultural difference thing, like that could be like a whole nother. I know. We should probably. Yeah, yeah we should be definitely. Like a part two. Part two. Yeah, yeah. yeah cultural peak. differences. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I'm still going awesome. off slowly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, thanks for hopping on with us. Uh, we hope this is encouraging to you if you are considering going into healthcare or into healthcare management. I uh, hope this helped you. And if you liked it, like, subscribe, share it with someone that you know. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you next time, hopefully part two, where we talk about cultural differences, I guess. We could talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. See you guys. Bye. <laughs> Sweet.